We're talking about an intense storm that delivers a lot of snow in a short amount of time. Now at five, a round of snow, wind, and rain. Spring storms bringing back a taste of wintry weather. See where warnings and alerts are happening in Utah's most accurate forecast. Plus, I don't believe it's something that can be faked. Lori Daybell found competent to stand trial. We break down what this could mean for the murder case involving her two children. And... I think we were too slow to pick up on how rapidly the economy was recovering. Risk of a recession, some experts warning rising inflation is slowing down our economy. See how soon Americans could see an economic change. Live, we're there for you. ABC4 News at 5 starts now. And good evening, I'm Emily Flores. And I'm Jordan Burroughs, in for Glenn Mills. Thanks for joining us tonight. We begin with wet weather moving in across Utah. Weather alerts and warnings from the northern to the southern parts of the state. This is a live look through our UDOT cameras in Garden City near Bear Lake. You can see all of these wet roads. And of course, we are following team coverage with ABC4's Ali Aurelian in Salt Lake County, covering the roads and mountain snow moving in. Yes, our Southern Utah correspondent Jordan Verdadero in Hilldale tracking the high wind warnings there. But first, let's check in with our chief meteorologist, Alana Brophy, in our Pinpoint Weather Center for a breakdown of this spring storm. Alana. The changes are here, and we knew they were coming. We talked about those winds and those gloomy conditions as we kick off this work week. We start down there in St. George, the Dixie Tech live camera shows reduced visibility. No, you're not seeing rain clouds down here, folks. The winds are actually kicking up a lot of dust. It's an area where we're seeing wind gusts in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range. And as we take a look at our wind advisories, we see them really peppering the entire state. And we know we are not done. Highest wind gust numbers. How about a 63 mile per hour gust? on the western end of the state. It's where the new high warn wind warning has been put into effect. That does include Millard, Juab County, and a portion of Iron County. We also have that high wind warning down there in south central Utah from Kanab over Lake Powell and up towards Hanksville. What you're seeing in tan all the way from the Four Corners to the Uinta Basin and the west desert over I-80 is a wind advisor. It gusts up to 55 miles per hour in that area, and we've seen the blowing dust along the Wasatch Front, so we know these winds were a precursor to the changes. Changes are Driving now live look at Logan where we've got rain on the pavement. The wet weather is here and I know you're thinking we're going to start with rain, right? You better be because we've got snow knocking on the doorstep. It's snowing in Elko and a cold front is headed our way. This wet weather is going to keep things very active as we get through the next several hours. It will bring impacts to our roads. Our very own Ali Arulian out live. Drivers need to know a few things, Ali. What could that be as this storm rolls in? Well, like you've been saying, Alana, UHP and UDOT advising drivers to be careful. We're going to be seeing wet conditions in the valley for drivers, and drivers need to be especially careful because we're going to be seeing snowy roads in higher elevations. UDOT saying drivers can expect wet roads without as much risk of snow sticking or slush. We have two things working in our favor. We have uh, warmer road temperatures, so it's going to be harder for the snow to stick. And then also we're going to uh, you know, see a lot of rain down here in the valleys. But for people driving up the Wasatch Front, Parley's Canyon, Sardine Canyon, and in Big and Little Cottonwood Canyon, you can expect snowy roads. We're talking about an intense storm that delivers a lot of snow in a short amount of time. UDOT saying they're prepping those areas with a salt solution to prevent snow from sticking and have crews ready to plow in high-risk areas. Our crews are going to be out there really managing the storm as it, as it comes in. But even with those precautions in place, they say later tonight it's very possible plows could get overwhelmed by the storm. We're looking at um, an inch or two per hour and it's going to be hard for the snow plows to keep up. UHP reminding people these aren't dry, warm weather roads and you should drive accordingly. Even though the roads are wet, if the temperatures are cool, people should still use the caution as if driving in the winter conditions. There are officers preparing for any potential crashes and ensuring drivers and officers are safe in any crash scenes. UHP and UDOT reminding people to give other drivers room and slow down. Use caution, slow down, make sure that you know what you're getting into before you leave your house or before you head out on the road. 
and our pinpoint weather team is of going to be having the latest on this storm, so be sure to tune in for all the updates you need. Live in Salt Lake County, I'm Ali Orulian, ABC4 News. All right, thank you so much, Ali. Well, sticking to the weather, the wind picking up in south, south central Utah, where there's an active warning in effect now. ABC4 Southern Utah correspondent Jordan Vertadero is in Hilldale tracking the wind warnings. Jordan, what do you have for us tonight? Like you said, Jordan, I'm in Hilldale and a lot of the roads here are covered in dirt, so you can probably see that blowing behind me. But I found a couple of hikers who are actually making a pit stop here because of these high winds. Bryce Griffiths and Ryan Bunting are hiking to Zion National Park and they've been doing this for 40 days. They just have two days left to go on their route, but they're stopping here for the night as the high wind warning is in effect. They've hiked through extreme weather before, but say it's not something they want to get caught in when visibility is low. We try to find a rock wall to kind of hold up against or a lot of the times when you're in the canyons, there's cuts in the rock that at least wind blocks some of it and you just try your best to break the wind with whatever you have available. People should also secure loose objects that could easily blow away with this wind or get damaged and power outages are also possible. Reporting live in Hilldale, Jordan Verdadero, ABC4 News. Thank you very much, Jordan. Today, a former Salt Lake City police detective was sentenced for his role in the January 6th attack at the U.S. Capitol last year. Prosecutors originally wanted Michael Harden to serve time in jail, but now that's not the case. ABC 4's Curtis Booker in Studio B for us this evening with an update. And Curtis, what's the sentence entail? Wimbledon well, Jordan, the sentence includes 30 days of home detention for former Salt Lake City police officer Michael Harden, as well as 18 months of probation. He's also ordered to pay $500 restitution and serve 60 hours of community service. Now, federal authorities arrested Harden last spring for his alleged involvement in the insurrection. In a probable cause statement obtained by ABC4, the judge stating that while Mr. Harden has his political perspectives, he didn't necessarily go to D.C. to exhibit or express them. Harden was not accused of any violence to property damage. Harden, who was a 20-year veteran of the Salt Lake City Police Department, left in 2017. I can read much more about this online right now at ABC4.com. Emily, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Curtis. Well, new developments in the Daybell criminal case that grabbed the country's attention. After nearly a year being on hold, Lori Vallow Daybell may now stand trial to face criminal charges in the deaths of her two young children. ABC4's Northern Utah correspondent Kate Garner has the latest developments in this case. Today, a judge finding Lori Vallow Daybell competent to stand trial with her husband Chad Daybell for the murder of her children, seven-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow and 16-year-old Tylee Ryan. In a court order, Judge Stephen Boyce writes, further, the order staying the case is hereby lifted. Defendant is to be transferred from the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare and remanded to the custody of the Fremont County Sheriff to be transported and brought before this court. Last yep. June, the judge ordering Vallow to be committed to the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare. After determining that the defendant, Lori Noreen Vallow, AKA Daybell, is not competent to proceed. In having uh, experience with the process, I don't believe it's something that can be faked. During the stay or pause, Vallow has been in a state hospital. These medical providers are um, licensed um, psychiatrists, they're medical doctors. The goal of the stay? They attempt to restore them. In today's order, Judge Boyce says Vallow has been restored and is now competent to stand trial, adding, the court orders that the defendant be brought before this court to be arraigned. In Ogden, Cade Garner, ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Cade. Well, Lori Vallow Daybell's arraignment is scheduled for April 19th. In Carbon County now, police have arrested a man who they say shot a gun at another car while driving. According to arrest records, 28 year old James Lockhart was driving near Price on Sunday when he shot at another car during a road rage incident. Records show the two people inside that other car followed him and called police. When troopers pulled him over, they say he immediately claimed that he was shooting into the air and not at anyone. Troopers say while searching his car, they found a gun close to $3,000 in cash, 50 fentanyl pills and other illegal drugs. Lockhart is now facing several charges, including attempted homicide and DUI. 
And new at five, a study breaking down how states responded to the COVID-19 pandemic shows Utah ranking number one. The National Bureau of Economic Research releasing its final COVID-19 report of how pandemic health, economy and policy varied across the 50 states in the District of Columbia. Utah earning the top spot coming in first in its overall response during the pandemic. For individual categories, Utah ranks fourth for economy and fifth for education. Now, Governor Spencer Cox responding to the report on Twitter saying, quote, Utah's strong institutions, collaboration between the state, local health departments and hospitals and timely and accurate information given by the Utah Department of Health saved lives and kept schools open without destroying our economy. Utahns should be proud of this recognition. Experts say there's a growing risk of Americans facing a recession as inflation continues to impact the country. The warning comes as policymakers with the Federal Reserve argue that a steady series of seven rate hikes this year can not only bring down soaring inflation, but can also help reset the job market by cooling off demand for labor. But some economists believe Americans should prepare for the worst. Former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers telling NBC's Meet the Press that the U.S. may see a recession soon. When we've had inflation above four and we've had unemployment below four, essentially always since World War II, that's been followed by a recession within the next two years. The Biden administration says they're taking steps to combat inflation, including lowering health care costs for families and extending the pause on student loans. But Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell criticized the student loan pause promising it will only contribute to the economic damage. Meanwhile, as gas prices drop slightly across the country this week, Utah's oil prices have taken the opposite turn, seeing an increase. That's according to AAA, showing today gas prices have dropped around eight cents across the country. AAA saying, unfortunately for Utahns, the average state fuel prices have actually increased by that same amount, with the average price of gas in Utah currently sitting at about $4.50 per gallon, marking an increase of around eight Eight cents from last week's average of 442 per gallon. This year's Stadium of Fire is back this summer and some of the country music's top artists are set to perform. Country superstar Tim McGraw is set to headline the event with special guest Marie Osmond. The annual event will also feature special military tributes and a flyover from F-35 jets. Organizers say the star set of night will end with the biggest stadium fireworks show in the USA. The Independence Day celebration kicks off July 2nd at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo. To purchase your tickets, you can visit our website at abc4.com. All right, well, still ahead, getting tough on ghost guns. New federal rules make it harder for criminals to get their hands on the untraceable firearms. Plus, it's Monday. That means we get to check out the wild and wacky plays for the past week in sports. The best and the worst coming up a bit later. And you're taking a live look at Utah Lake. Wind is making the water choppy and you can't make out the lake mountains because we've got blowing dust in the West Desert. Also high wind warnings as wet weather moves into portions of the state right now. Tracking those showers in Utah's most accurate forecast.
You're watching ABC4 News. And welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. President Biden cracking down on ghost guns with new federal rules. He's also nominating someone to run the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. Washington correspondent Hannah Brent has the details from our nation's capital. Ghost guns are firearms without serial numbers, and the Biden administration says their new rules will make it harder for criminals to get them and use them for violent crimes. I did on the firearm. This DIY project can have dangerous results. Someone can convert parts in a box into a working gun with alarming ease. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco says criminals choose to use ghost guns because they're untraceable. But make no mistake, they are real. They can shoot to kill, and they do. Now President Biden is announcing new federal rules that will require background checks for gun kit buyers and ensure that the parts are licensed and have serial numbers. All of a sudden, it's no longer a ghost. It has a return address. It's going to help save lives. Gun control advocates are celebrating the decision, including school shooting survivor Mia Tretta. We have a president who realizes that thoughts and prayers alone are not enough. But the moves will likely face legal challenges from pro-gun groups like the NRA, who called the rules extreme. It isn't extreme, just basic common sense. The president also announced that he's nominating Steve Dettelbach to run the ATF. The men and women of the ATF and the public that they protect deserve better support from us. But the ATF hasn't had a permanent director since 2015 because the Senate has to confirm any nominee, which is a politically charged process. And Dettelbach is likely to face an uphill battle too. In Washington, I'm Hannah Brandt. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy, weather rates certified 11 years in a row. All right, with all these changes on the way, let's head over for another look at the weather, Alana. Okay, friends, we've got wet weather already impacting Cache Valley. Rain on the camera. We've got rain coming down. It starts as rain, but changes are on the way. Let's look at that storm tracker radar. Get pinpoint here and show you exactly where the moisture has filled in in the last two hours. You can see it, West Desert, moving over the Great Salt Lake, hitting Cache Valley into Weber County, all mountains, also getting some light showers. But what you're seeing is the distinct difference here between the rain and the snow line. It gives you an idea that we've got a cold front coming through with colder air behind the front. We're also battling those wicked winds. I'm going to show you where that wet weather is headed. Our warnings and advisories are posted, and we do have some winter alerts. Even though we're into springtime, it's a late season storm that means business with winter impacts right around the corner. This is a live look at Oak City. This is where that high wind warning is in effect. No, folks, this is not rain. We're dealing with blowing dust, gust, wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour, and the dust really impacting visibility at this hour. We're going to see that high wind warning hold until midnight over there near Oak City. Look at the southwest desert. Those numbers clocking in the 60 mile per hour range. Also the case over near Hanksville. Blanding close to 40 miles per hour and also in Salt Lake. Now, as the front comes through, the winds will switch directions. We're seeing the southerly winds in the southern half of the state. Northwesterly winds are on the way and they're chilly. Why is this happening? We've got an area of low pressure. It's going to dig through the desert southwest and then lift to the northeast as we make it into tomorrow. Since it's moving through our neck of the woods, it means it brings the potential for that wet weather and colder air. Yes, we've got those winter alerts, a winter storm warning for the Wasatch and the Uintas. We're talking one to two feet in the area as you see in pink winter weather advisory for the central mountains as well as a portion of the Uintas and we know the purple still going to see accumulating snow that includes Cove Fort our central mountains five to ten inches expected now our heaviest bout of moisture is going to come through tonight. That's where that band of snow is. Satellite radar shows that wet weather on the move. The front is basically knocking on the door behind it. We get the colder air, which is why our rain will transition to snow. Now we have rain holding on in our valleys for the next little while. The front will come through and we'll see that transition. Now there is a chance we could see some thunderstorm activity with this. We've got a chance of a thunderstorm from Logan all the way down to Beaver, and that does include over the high country. So thunder snow, not out of the question. Tomorrow, that actually shifts to the eastern side of the state from the Uinta Basin down to Grand County and over the high country as well as into southwestern Wyoming. So some lightning, not out of the question. Let's see where the front's headed. It comes on through, and then we get the cold air behind it. By 10 o'clock tonight, we'll be on the air, ABC4 News. We could see a lot of areas that have switched over to some sloppy spring snow. You see that band of moisture. It means business up in the mountains, heavy snowfall rates. As that moves 
out of the area and tracks east by the early morning hours. We get showery. That cold northwesterly flow will be out there and we see snow showers holding and keeping us unsettled for our Tuesday in the north. And here we are by lunchtime and we're going to see those showers popping up and we stay active and unsettled as we get through Wednesday, we actually have a chance of moisture for the next several days in northern Utah. How much snow's on the way? Well, if you're under that advisory, it's 5 to 10 inches in southwestern Wyoming. Benches could see some accumulating on the grassy areas, 2 to 6 possible. And we know the northern mountains could see 1 to 2 feet. They've got that winter storm warning. In our central and southern valleys, it's going to start as rain, and it could get that wintry, sloppy mix. And some areas will see straight snow and then get back to mixed 30s and 40s for tomorrow. Well below average. That will also be the case on the eastern side of the state. St. George only at 56, so cold statewide with windy conditions holding on down there in Washington County. Slight chance of a shower Tuesday morning and then drier conditions, but the winds keep cranking in southern Utah. Here's the Wasatch Front. Chance of those snow showers through Wednesday and the chance of moisture holds until Saturday as another system will want to clip northern Utah. Highs in the 40s. Just bundle up. <laughs> Over to you guys. Jackets back out. Thank you so much, Alana. Time now for a look at sports star Wesley Raff. And of course, it's Monday. Uh, Wes. Just take it over. I can do that. <laughs> I have the technology. It's busy week in sports, and what better way to wrap it up than by reviewing the highlights and the lowlights from the past seven days, the bloopers and the blunder. So here we go. It's time for the best and the worst. And we had a couple of plays from the Jazz Thunder game. OKC with the shot, bounces around, and then just comes to the rest on the bracket between the rim and the backboard and just stayed there. Later, Daniel House goes up for the block, ends up leapfrogging his man. Skyed up there and got a end up a little ride. Some good news for an Oklahoma City fan though. Final home game, the half court shot, and he makes it and wins $20,000. The goalie got some help here, the ball off the post, then he reaches his hand up and makes the save. Quick reflexes there and more good reaction to come back to the mound. Cincinnati pitcher makes the catch, barely had time to react, but got the snag. Same thing happened in softball to this pitcher. Line drive, got her glove up, hauled it in, just kind of nonchalantly. Pop up, drifting towards the dugout. Justin Turner of the Dodgers dives onto the rail and makes the grab. Great concentration, and he balances and holds on for the out. This center fielder went up and over the fence in the outfield, jumped up, made the catch, went over the wall, held onto the ball, so nicely done there. Great shot here by Darius Garland off the backboard, spins it up and in. Bad shot here though by Steven Adams. Goes up for the dunk and denied. Slams it off the back of the iron and it kicks out to the half court line. Pitcher tracks down the ball here, flips it to first, but his glove comes off. However, the ball did make it in time for the out. This pitcher had his glove knocked off on the line drive, but he chased down the ball, got it to first, in time for the out. Best assist, LaMelo Ball on the break. Oh my goodness, he goes between his legs, then off the backboard. That was sweet. And this was almost the assist of the year. Par three tournament at the Masters, Sam Burns hits it right into the gallery. A fan catches it and then tosses the ball onto the green where it catches the slope and starts rolling towards the hole and rolling and rolling and it almost went in. That would have been awesome. Still pretty cool. So his helping hand gets him a spot on this week's edition of the best and the worst. So what if that ball would have gone in? It just would have been it's really funny. Par three tournament. Nobody was keeping okay. accurate score. Okay. So yeah, that doesn't count. Hey, the Utah Jazz will take on the Dallas Mavericks in the first round of the NBA playoffs. That series will start Saturday morning and coming up at six o'clock. We're going to hear from both teams. Okay. Thanks so much, Wes. Yeah. We appreciate it. We'll be right back.